Well, thank you all. Uh, my name is Anil Kumar, and uh, uh, I am a urologist. And I've been in uh, Michigan since 1985. I came here uh, as a researcher, scientist, at Wayne State University. So, Wayne State University is my American dream. I came here, Wayne State University sponsored my green card, gave me residency in urology. I met this wonderful medical student from a little town called West Branch, Marjorie Huey, family all union, and we were married in 1986. Two boys, they were good students, would have gone to University of Michigan, we chose that they go to Wayne State, and both of them are now in medical school. One just finished from Wayne State University. So as a urologist for 30 years, uh, I've been practicing. Uh, I'm on clinical staff, and I'm a, a site director for urology residency program for Michigan State University. So I've been a teacher all my life. And, not just that, I've been a business person. I own a surgery center. I saved a hospital out of bankruptcy in Pontiac, but some physicians to join hands together. And so therefore we could give the inner city workers a chance to continue to work. And people in Pontiac who did not have transportation to be able to use the hospital. So that's part of the business part. But as I started to continue practice of medicine, I realized that American health system was not the same as when I came to this country. When I came to this country, I would write a prescription, say for an antibiotic, and I would be asked to do what is called as write as DAW, dispense as written, because that would mean that they would get the best commercial new antibiotic. And one of them I still humorously remember, she said, I'm allergic to generics. You know, you can't be allergic to generics. <laughs> now, fast forward ahead, 20 years, and I sit over there and I'm writing prescriptions, and I have our elderly people, patients, actually tell me, Dr. Kumar, you're writing this prescription, it's going to cost me $300. I'm on a fixed income. Either I can have food, or I can have these pills. And so as a physician, I was wondering, I, what am I practicing? Medicare doesn't cover their health uh, uh, prescription drugs. So it is as good as saying, okay, we as Medicare will cover your diagnosis, we'll tell you what's wrong with you, but you get to go find the money to fix it. Now that cannot be healthcare, okay? And the same thing I noticed with my students. They came out with debt of two to three hundred thousand dollars. When I went to medical school, it was the passion. It was the wanting to do good for humanity. It was wanting to win the Nobel Prize because I could cure cancer. Never happened. Maybe still have a chance, but we'll try. But the idea was you are a physician not there to make a great living for yourself because money will follow, but that you will serve humanity. And what do I see with my students now? They're more concerned with how are they going to pay their debt, and rightly so. So they're looking, okay, I want to go into dermatology. I want to go into this field or that because it pays me more and gives better quality of life. For me, medicine is life. What better quality do you want? So that got me to thinking six years ago, and I said, no, the Democrat in me came out. I said, you have to change. The only way in a democracy you can change systems is by being involved. So just as I learned how to swim when I was a kid, they put me in this little training thing to paddle for five days, and I said, heck, that's not the way I'm gonna to learn to swim. I just went and jumped in the deep. In two minutes, I knew how to swim. So I used the same thing as, okay, I'll run for Congress. So I ran for Congress in a very gerrymandered district, 11th district. We put up a good fight, and we did what the best we could. But the idea is still in my heart that we need to continue as Democrats to want to make the change. And I applaud all of you who are running for different offices. 
Because unless we do this, we will not ever make a change. And as Democrats, we have to be passionate, energized. This is the time for the blue wave. This is the year. So I did take a hiatus in terms of not running for Congress to still continue my, my, my mission for healthcare and education. So I looked into what happened in 2016, and I realized that we as Democrats need to change the way we are doing things. And so Michigan Democrat Party, when I was running for Congress, I felt was very weak, was not very supportive of our candidates. And I decided that for this year and years to come, I will try to support the party, support our candidates to make a change so that we change the format. So that gave me to thinking, still, what can I do? And so that's why I'm running for the board of directors for Wayne State. And why? Because education, we need debt-free education. We need the inner city kids to have better uh, scholarships. We need the the uh, uh, companies, that startup companies, others, to have innovative programs. They're ready to do it for free. We just need people to re reach out to them and say, hey, mentor these kids from the inner city. Teach them entrepreneurship. Teach them how to make a living. Teach them science. Teach them math. That's what I want to do. We have so many alumni in the Wayne State. These people are ready to contribute, but somebody needs to ask them. We need more research funding. Wayne State is the most research that it does amongst the three universities. But it doesn't get the funding for the same. It's in our city. We need it. We need a possibly a branch of Wayne State in Pontiac. I was talking to the mayor in Pontiac. So why should we not have a branch of Wayne State in Pontiac? Now we have the inner city of Pontiac flourish because it's an educational center. Wherever there is education, wherever there are students, you're going to flourish. And I'd like to see the change. The president of Wayne State is now trying to change the in-state versus the out-state admissions. It was 75 to 25 percent. 75 in-state, 25 because it's cheaper for in-state. They want to make it 60-40 because out-state pays more. We don't want that. We want our Michigan kids to get education that is economical so that they can be. The two things that really are the future of any nation, especially our nation, health and education. So if I can be of service, if you can help me be of service, it will be my most honorable thing that I can do. And so, since it is a nominated position, I would really behest upon you, 25th August, 26th August, please go to Lansing, because otherwise we cannot win. And we want to win. And I just to let you know that five out of the seats out of eight at Wayne State were held by Republicans. These are not our friends to help our inner city schools. These are not our people who will help the universities or the state sponsored to do the best for the people. We need Democrats there. So please need your support. And I really appreciate and thank you for your time. Anybody with a question? Back here, Mike McCarthy. Yes, yes I just, I, I commend you, Dr. Kumar, for being a teaching doctor because they were very important in my learning medicine. And I think I, when I went to the various clinics that I've worked for, I would always go in the back and I would spend time in the billing department before I'd sign up because I wanted to know what was happening with the money and how things were supported. And it was always a bit of chaos. And you dealt with the business aspect and the teaching aspect. What do you think of the single payer system? Well, that is the ultimate system that will do us good. In a capitalistic society, it's going to have a lot of, of, of um, roadblocks. But there are ways to still reach that. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways was, is, for example, Medicare for All or what is called the public option in the state of Michigan. And the, the, the people that are running for governors, especially Gretchen Whitmer, had been talking to her. We as a state can have a public option of Medicaid. You don't need the federal government to say if you have public option or not. 
I was totally disappointed when six Democrats voted against the public option when Barack Obama was putting the, uh, the ACA. That would have solved a lot of problems, would have got us into the single payer system. But we can still do it as a state if we can have public option, which gives Medicaid, which is state. Then I would really encourage the Republicans to do what they have always wanted to do, is to have interstate insurances. Because then we can float our public option Medicaid to the other states, and then the whole country can have that. That's the way to the single payer system. It is the best system, it is straightforward. Health is something that is fundamental to all people. There are two things. I mean, uh, you know, the good saying, God made all men equal, is true in a, in a, in a, in a, in a idealistic manner, but really all men and women are made unequal. But what behooves upon society is to give equal opportunity to all. And that equal opportunity can be done by two ways, education and health. And that's where my mission is. Any other questions? Yes, sir. <coughs> Don't you think if we can, or when we can get the single payer system, the old red costs are going to go down? It does, yeah, sure. Could you repeat the question? all these different health oh, right, right. Yes. The, the, the costs, the overhead costs will go down. So probably the total cost will go down. And of course, we have to have the nerve to somehow attack the price of drugs. Absolutely. And, uh, and I can go on. The question or the statement is that if there is single payer system, that you will see the cost of health care go down. And that is absolutely true. Let's look at Medicare. The administrative cost, 3%. Blue Cross Blue Shield, administrative cost, 26%. So what do the Republicans and some of our people that are sold to the insurance companies? We are now farming it out to privatization. We're giving Medicare to be run by private company. The 3% is starting to go to 11%. That's increasing our cost. Talk about pharmaceuticals. It is our esteemed Congress that passed a law about six years, eight years ago to say that Medicare, CMS, cannot negotiate with pharmaceuticals for pricing. So what does it mean? I give you my credit card and you go shopping without asking for any prices, nothing. That is how we, the American people, we, the patients, are being taken for a ride. That is how our money is being stolen. Patients, that's what my passion was, have no lobbies. Patients have no representations. Actually, if you ask me what is the ultimate evil that we have in our system, it is campaign finance reform. That's what we need. Because that is exactly what is making everybody sell ourselves out and not give the American people what they deserve. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.